Hey everyone, welcome back. Our third guest is a ceramic designer bringing sheets to life through his sculpture designs. His work is inspired by traditional Japanese pottery along with natural plants and creature forms from the ocean. And his pieces have been in boutique stores in New York as well as high-end stores such as Mitchell Gold plus Bob Williams who are joining us to tell us more about his craft. Please welcome ceramic designer Jonathan Castro. Hey, welcome. Hello, thanks for having me. It's so funny how the tone in my voice just shifted when I started <laughs> taking, speaking about creatures of the ocean. I know, it was coming to life. <laughs> Which is what you do yeah. in, for, with your hands, no less. And so um, first let's talk about how one becomes a ceramic designer. Oh gosh. So I actually started uh, studying architecture in college and then I made the wonderful mistake of touching clay and it just really connected with me, the materials and how to manipulate it. And then I just changed everything, changed my major and it just became my main focus. And now it's like 15 years later, still working in clay, so. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, right? It's not like know. you grew up saying, oh, I'm going to be a ceramic designer, right. right? But then you touched clay and it was over. It was like, okay, this is my calling. Yeah. Even in high school, I was like, I had like opportunities to take art classes and someone was like, oh, you could do like theater or you could do pottery. And I was like, who does pottery? Fast forward to now, it's my life. <laughs> yeah, but the beauty of it is the way you've been crafting your life within right. it, right? Yeah. Because yep. um, uh, before getting on camera, we were saying there, you have two parts to, to your business, right? Which is fully functional and then the sculptural art pieces. And right. so um, the fully functional, uh, obviously, are like the, the bowls, the plates, the cups, um, the ones that were featured in these high-end stores that are closed now or temporarily or were right. temporarily closed and are now reopening. However, that was a whole year uh, of having to pivot. So. How impacted were you when it came to the functional aspect of your business? Well, at first, at the beginning of the pandemic, it halted completely for about two months. And I think everyone was just not sure what was happening. Everything literally closed down and I just heard crickets. And it made me very nervous because I do this full time and it's my livelihood. And so it was, it was dead silent for a couple of months. And then I think people got settled into sort of the living at working from home scenario and things started to shift in a good way for me where people were wanting to have things that were unique and special to them and to almost to treat themselves. And so then the orders, custom orders started coming through. So the stores weren't ordering anymore, but people were reaching out to me through Instagram or they had emailed me from doing pop-up shows in Harlem uh, where they had purchased before. So it just, it started to form in a different way. And that's really what's been keeping me afloat, honestly. Amazing, amazing, which is where I met you, right? I met you at right. the Kent exactly. Royale uh, Art Gallery, right? Yes. And, um, and, and I was uh, taken by, by your artistry. And, and then there's the, uh, the sculptural art aspect of it. But uh, what I do find mm -hmm. fascinating is how um, circumstances basically uh, had you become, uh, I mean, you, you did say you have wholesale, you have retail, and then you have the sculptural art, but now you had to pivot completely into retail. And then right. you're only one person. So it, 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 how long does it take you to, to make something? And um, like when you're making sets, right? I'm sure you get these orders in advance that allow you the time that you need right. to craft them in, in sets. And so now you have people ordering them in, individually. It's like, like, what was that like for you? Uh, it was overwhelming in a different way and overwhelming in a good way. Um, but I really had to like strategize um, to keep on top because I typically have about a three to four week lead time from start to finish um, because it's quite a process from the making to like the drying process to the firing process. It takes two to three weeks to 
finish a full cycle. And if I'm doing sculptural work, it takes even longer um, because clay is very temperamental in the process. And so it, it's fussy. It doesn't like to be rushed, you know, or else it'd be like, I'm going to crack on you. So then you have to start over again. So it's all about timing um, with clay. And people have been very understanding, especially when they're getting, they know they're getting something handmade. Um, they know that time is going to go into it. So they're patient. So, so with regards to your um, art that is uh, inspired by um, creatures from the water, right, or the ocean, yeah. um, like you have this style that um, pretty much is recognizable. If, if you see it anywhere, you, you'll know it's a Jonathan Castro <laughs> ceramic, right? And so I, I believe you have one right next to you. Yes, um, I do. Right? And so I know you make them in forms that where, where they can be hung up on the wall. And the, is, right. that, uh, is that a vase? Like, what is that? Right. So this one, I'm just going to grab it real quick. So this one is a vase. And so a lot of people love to have they want something artistic, but they also almost need something functional. So sometimes I'll combine the two. So this vase was thrown uh, on the wheel and then all of these detailings um, were added one by one. And so they are inspired by sort of like sea anemone, underwater creatures, and I kind of make them take over sort of a form. Um, but there are pieces that are strictly sculptural that have no function to it. But this is kind of like the best of both worlds. Nice, nice, nice. And and so, what are some of these uh, sculptural art pieces, and um, and are they displayed anywhere right now? They are, yeah, actually. So, as things started to semi open up, um, places where I sort of sold through or worked with, uh, they kind of were asking, okay, I think we're ready. So there's a gallery in Flatiron called Maison 10, and they love having my anomaly work. This is called the Anomaly Series, the little, because they're like the unknown. Um, so they love to carry a lot of my sculptural work, which is great because you're kind of like, it's very high end. The product that they have there and the art that they carry, it's all like very curated. And so it's great to have a space um, where I can really showcase my high artistic side. That's wonderful. And, and we're so grateful to you for taking the time to share it with our viewers. And so um, if anyone were interested in uh, obtaining your work, right? It's, you've got bowls, you've got plates, you've got, right. you've even got these cute, um, I want to say incense uh, holders or burners. Oh, yeah. And oh, candles. Oh. Oh, and candles. Oh yeah. my goodness. So this actually became one of my best sellers, especially during the pandemic, because mm -hmm. people were like, I need some aromatherapy. And so my grip cup candle is uh, a soy wax base and has a crackling wood wick. So when you light it, it gives like a light crackle sound. It's just great ambiance and perfect scent. And uh, a lot of people have been needing a lot of you know, relaxation and aromatherapy. So these have been awesome um, for this last year, especially. Yeah, and I love that you you showed and you referenced it as your grip candle because a lot of your cups are made that way as well, right. which is also a, a trademark of yours. Can we just right. show it one more time? Sure, I have. So the best part about the candle is it starts as a candle and then it ends as the cup. So since it's a soy wax base, you can clean it out with soap and water and then use it as the drinking cup and then you have something to drink out of. Nice. And this is inspired by sort of Japanese traditional uh, tea bowls. And I just made it a bit more ergonomic, a little bit more like modern with the colors and you need know, to drink your tea or coffee in it. And it's very cozy. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I mean, I, we're, we're showing images of your work as we've been uh, conversing, but cool. um, I'm glad you had some right there that you can share with us. Yeah. Cause I really dig like you have little marks that basically identify uh, Jonathan Castro and, <laughs> and, and your anomaly series. I, I, that, that to me 
more than anything when I was watching you on the film, it looks very therapeutic. So I'm assuming that your relationship to Clay has helped you along the way throughout oh, totally. this pandemic. It's amazing that my, the thing that is my work is also my therapy, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'm very blessed to be able to continue to do it. So, and for the community support, because honestly, if it wasn't for the surrounding community and even the social media community, it would be extra hard for me um, during these times. So thank you. It's wonderful. It's lovely to get back to basics and recognize like you never really worked a day in your life. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for bringing here, Jonathan. Yeah, thank you. All right. Once again, you guys, to purchase some of his sculpted artistry, you can visit jonathancastrodesigns.com. And of course, be sure to follow him on Instagram at Jonathan Castro Designs. All right. Don't go anywhere. Bobby C's Weekly Sports Roundup is coming up next.